You've probably seen this sports broadcast transition in my football and golf promos, the ball flying across the screen, but this is no template. It is a custom Matthew Motion sports broadcast transition made with 3D animation and hand-drawn effects. And I wrapped it together all with Adobe After Effects. In this video, I'm gonna break down how I did it step-by-step step, so you can see exactly how it's done. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey, real quick, just before this video starts, this video is gonna be sponsored by me, motiondirective.com slash shop. Go buy these hats if you have motion. If you have motion, go buy these hats and support your boy. Uh, let's get into the video. First off, you gotta start with your idea. What scene is this transitioning? What is your A shot and what is your B shot? Now for you, that may be completely different from what I have personally done. But to use this transition, you need an A and you need a B shot. Preferably to get this mapped out in your head, you should do some sketching, some thumbnails, some storyboards, and I'll put some of mine up on the screen right here so you can see that this is all planned out. Though I've done this with many different sports, as you can see with golf and football, I'm gonna be walking through the NFL football transition because that's the viral one, right? So everyone wants to see how I did that. Obviously it's the exact same technique and it's applied to the golf transition as well. Okay, now that we are in Cinema 4D, you can see the behind the scenes of the football transition. Now, what we see here with the grayed out part is what's off screen and whatever is within these borders is what's on screen. I have our football here animating on the X plane to snap into camera, hold for a bit and then snap out. The main plane of animation is this position X value. That's where it's coming from right to left and showing those laces on that ball real nicely. We need to make sure that the position of the ball is actually touching the top and the bottom of the frame because that will allow us to do a wipe. These other axes of animation on the rotation are just to give it that little bit of life, not make it so stagnant. We don't want a linear move just across the screen. We want it to feel like it was thrown or tossed. Animating these other axes of rotation are gonna help with that. After you fine tuned exactly how you want it to roll from left to right or from right to left, making sure that the top and the bottom are touching the off screen, this will allow us to mask it perfect later. Once you've finished that, you wanna go up to this little gear icon. And when you're saving out, make sure your PNGs are saving out with an alpha channel so we can go ahead and use this as the transition for our A to B shot like we discussed earlier. And when you kick out those files, they should look something like this. As you can see, the white background is meaning there is no background. Then, as soon as you have your image sequence here, you can bring it into After Effects one of two ways. You can actually drag them in frame by frame and you can go to animation, keyframe assistant, and you can actually sequence the layers here by selecting all of them going to animation keyframe assistance and sequence layers or you can go to import file and once in this import screen you select the first png and you can go and select png sequence that will bring in all of the pngs it'll look something like this then you can go to interpret footage and make sure it's just at the frame rate that you're doing your frame rate at. It's gonna auto go to 30. But as for this scene, I wanted to have individual control over the frames because there's only like 20 frames. So I had them sequenced in this comp here. As you can see, this is a PNG sequence. So we have this transparency on the background, meaning if we wanted to put a crappy mask on say the left side here and this blocky beautiful shape of a ball was covering the crappy mask that was bringing on shot two on the right here all we would have to do is just put it behind this set animation that's basically the concept so as you see that's all that's happening right here this is literally the behind the scenes right here of the nfl animation never before seen all it is is this crappy mask then we put the football on top of it and it becomes the football transitioning. But without the football, this doesn't transition properly. It's just a crappy mask. As you can see right here, it's just a crappy mask. But with the football, it seems like the football is the one pulling the next scene into fruition. Now the next step is to add on this cell over top, which we would have to do in Photoshop. So jumping over to our Photoshop file here, essentially what is happening here is we bring in our video group, which is our rendered version of what you just saw. And what we're basically doing is we're drawing over it frame by frame with my Wacom. Now I have this file on my actual PC, but I drew it with my stylus. So 
this thing you see here, this stylus, this is what is drawing what you are seeing playing. So since this ball is transitioning us into a world where a lot of the hand-drawn effects exist, the left side doesn't have the hand-drawn cell, but the right side does have the hand-drawn cell. And it sort of brings in this wave of the drawing that I did. So for that reason, it's only on the right side. But if we actually take away the reference, we can see that it's 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 very basic. You know, it's just this white, it's just these white lines being drawn frame by frame over top the ball. Realistically, it's actually a fun process. It's like you're in preschool again, but it's hard to get the motions that you really want. So you have to be very conscious of your animation principles and timing. Then when you put it all together, you can group these frame by frame animations over top the reference track. When you're ready for export and you like what you have here, all you have to do is literally just toggle that off and go to this little hamburger stack right here and go to render video. All right, so you're gonna pull up with probably this screen right here. What you're gonna wanna do is see Adobe Media Encoder. This is gonna export like a video. We want the actual image sequence. So if we go to Photoshop image sequence, we can actually control the PNGs getting exported frame by frame. Go to the alpha channel, straight unmatted, and that's gonna give us our actual transparent value to export back into Adobe After Effects. So once you like what you've rendered, you can take this actually back into After Effects instead of rendering the video straight out of Photoshop. And that's what you see here with the accent transition on Adobe After Effects. We exported it into Adobe After Effects from Adobe Photoshop using the same thing that you saw me do with the 3D scene exact same process. Now, when this gets put back onto the footage, you can see it all comes together through the vision. The football is wiping on the right side of the cell, and that brings on these waves that interact with the animation later, as you can see right here. Now, this is the sort of custom look that you can get when you really plan a shot out. So if you got a little bit out of this, make sure to drop a comment and let me know. That is the Matthew Motion Custom Sports Broadcast Transition. I hope you enjoyed this shot breakdown. There will be many more to come. Always remember, you can get my outcome with layered creativity. That's what makes you stand out. If this helped you, make sure you press subscribe. Put on the post notifications. You don't want to miss a video when they come out. And let me know in the comments what shot of mine that I should break down next. I'll see you in the next one.